In today's video, I'm going to go through what's going on with the USDC stablecoin, why it depegged, dropping below 90 cents last night, and how this ties into the Silicon Valley bank failure. Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. Let's get into the video. First thing I want to talk about briefly is what happened with Silicon Valley Bank. And there's a lot of great articles out there about that. And so this isn't going to go into all of the explicit detail. But one notion that I really wanted to spell is that this was somehow a crypto related bank failure because I've heard some media personalities get that wrong. This is a bank. It's a regional bank and it deals heavily in the tech sector. But this is much bigger than crypto. And this is ultimately a failure of traditional finance that relates to the interest rates in the United States. And I'll talk about exactly how that works in relative brevity. So Silicon Valley Bank, just to give you a frame of reference for the scale of this, is a top 20 bank in the United States, or rather was until yesterday. It was rank 18 with $212 billion of assets. And to put that in perspective, that is just under half of the assets at Capital One. And it's more than USAA, two banks that many people are probably familiar with. So this is a major bank, and it is especially notable because even though it's a regional bank since it's in Silicon Valley, it is heavily used by startups, by venture capital funds. It's sort of the go-to bank for a lot of people in the tech sector. And if you look at some other stats last year, this is relevant, their net income was around $1.509 billion. So things were going very well for Silicon Valley Bank. They had grown tremendously over the past five and 10 years. However, as interest rates were hiked dramatically by the Federal Reserve over the past year, that's when the trouble began and things really collapsed. They hit the fan over the past week. So what happened was basically they had purchased upwards of $100 billion of fixed income assets that were paying out at a roughly 1.6 to 1.7% interest rate. And you think about, right, that makes sense. That's how banks make money. And interest rates in the United States had been so low for so long that they were paying out less than that to depositors. So those were profitable at the time that they were purchased. However, as the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates, those treasuries were now worth less than what they paid for them. And the reason for that is that who wants to hold something with a 1.79% yield when you can buy a new fixed income asset that has a higher yield, right? And so as the economy cooled off and as funds and tech companies started to withdraw money, they were forced to sell $21 billion of those assets this year and book a $1.8 billion after tax loss. And then they attempted to make up for it by issuing some stock. And now if you look back at this income statement here, you can see that their net income was only $1.5 billion. So they basically lost more on this one sale than they had made in the entire previous year. And then this is when many people in the tech sector began to panic and start withdrawing funds from the bank. You had funds, for example, Peter Thiel urging their portfolio companies, get your money out of Silicon Valley Bank. And this all happened over the past three days. And so this was accompanied by a stock crash it was accompanied by the CEO putting out a statement urging people to not withdraw funds, which is not usually something that calms people down during a bank run because that implies that the bank does not have the money to cover the withdrawals. So billions of dollars were withdrawn on Thursday and Friday, and then eventually the FDIC stepped in, closed the bank, declared it failed, and took over operations, launching the Deposit Insurance National Bank of Santa Clara. Now, for people who aren't familiar with the FDIC, FDIC insures up to $250,000 on accounts. However, remember, because Silicon Valley Bank deals so heavily in the tech sector, a huge number of their accounts are from tech companies that maybe, for example, raised millions of dollars, and then they parked those millions of dollars in Silicon Valley Bank. Or there's funds that might have millions of dollars there. So now you have these businesses whose most or all of their money is locked up in this bank. We'll say likely it's not all gone, right? Because they still have all those assets. The problem is when will they be able to get those assets back and how much will they get back? Will it be 95 cents on the dollar? Will it be the full amount? Will it be 90 cents on the dollar? Nobody really knows right now. And because of this, you have a lot of tech companies starting to run into issues. For example, Etsy warned sellers of a delay in processing payments. You had hundreds of startups, quote, facing an extinction level event. And if you 
just look in the news, there's lots of events of various startups sending out messages to their customers saying, hey, we don't know if we'll be able to continue operations. And there's questions of, will these startups be able to, for example, make the next payroll if this isn't sorted out in time? So how does all of this play into USDC? Well, USDC, if you're not familiar, is a US dollar stable coin, which should in theory always be equal to a dollar. It's issued by a company known as Circle, and many, many people trust USDC because it's widely thought to be the most heavily regulated crypto stablecoin. However, the problem is because it's so heavily regulated, all of the reserves for their stablecoins are either parked in US banks or they're parked in short-term US treasuries. And so turns out one of those banks is, you guessed it, Silicon Valley Bank. So rumors began to circulate around the middle of the day yesterday that some of Circle's money was in Silicon Valley Bank. People didn't really know how much. Then at 6.50 p.m., March 10th, they put out this statement that Silicon Valley Bank is one of six banking partners that manage about 25% of USDC reserves. So that's 25% between all six banking partners, not just Silicon Valley Bank. And if you look, you find 6.50, then you can see that started the first major dip where it dropped below 98 cents. And then fast forward a few hours at 10, 11 p.m., they announced that in fact, Silicon Valley Bank was holding $3.3 billion out of $40 billion of USDC reserves at the current moment. And then you can see that on the chart, I don't even need to find the time. That is really when the price started to tank and dropped all the way below 90 cents. And you might be thinking, why would that drop below 90 cents? That doesn't make sense because that's actually a higher percentage discount than the entire reserves that Silicon Valley Bank managed. And you know that they're going to get some money back from those reserves. Well, the reason is that many people were concerned that if Circle continues to honor one-to-one -one withdrawals of USDC to USD, then as people withdraw, they'll be using their good reserves to pay out those withdrawals while the shortfall stays the same. And so, for example, if you just look at this quick chart I made, Currently, 3.3 out of 40 billion is 8.3% of the reserves are at Silicon Valley Bank. Now imagine that 5 billion is withdrawn. Now it's 9.4%. Now imagine that you have 30 billion withdrawn. And keep in mind, people are panicking. A lot of people are going to withdraw when they can. All of a sudden, 33% of the reserves are at Silicon Valley Bank. And so that is the concern. Uh, one thing to know is if you just look at the math here on the 40 billion, that shortfall is not as bad as it seems here, if you consider that some percentage of those reserves will almost certainly be recovered. If it's 90%, then there's only a 0.8% shortfall. Even if it's 50%, there's a 4% shortfall. And so in that case, you would say, well, the USDC is trading at a lower price than makes sense. But keep in mind, these sorts of panics can cascade quickly, and sometimes anything bad that can happen will happen. So I do understand why people are panicking. And as of the time I'm making this video, Circle put out an update just a few minutes ago that when banks open on Monday morning, they will be honoring USDC redemptions one-to-one -one for the US dollar. And they do say that they're prepared to meet any liquidity issues that might arise. So when that happens, I am expecting a spike in USDC. We've already seen the price start to rise a bit up over 97 cents briefly. That being said, I'm expecting significant withdrawals for this, right? I mean, and I think this has been a solid stable coin, so it's a shame what's happening, but I'm expecting significant withdrawals because people just want to be on the safe side or they want to arbitrage. And so once that happens and once, say, billions, tens of billions are withdrawn, what happens next is anyone's guess because we still have other concerns of will this failure move to other banks? Will the FDIC find someone to purchase this bank? what exactly is going to happen. So there's still a lot of questions out there. And personally, if I were holding any USDC, because I am not, then if this spiked up to a dollar, I would be out. I'll move on to things that don't have ongoing issues with their bank reserves. And that's what's going on real brief with USDC. I'll continue to follow this saga as it unfolds if anything more notable happens. And if you want more content on this topic, be sure to like this video and subscribe. Until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.